Radio. 0.7 FM, and as I indicated, Sami J. Fuse, National Communications Officer of the NDC, has joined us in studio yesterday. They were demonstrating across the 16 regions of Ghana. They say enough is enough. They are calling for a forensic audit of the uh, voters register. They also want uh, the integrity of the IT system of the Electoral Commission, inspected by political parties and stakeholders in this year's election. Yesterday, the EC issued a statement. They say, well, they've seen it, they, they're reviewing it, and would make their decision known. Sami J.F., good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, Winston. Thanks for having me. Hope you're doing very well this morning. Uh, we have life, we have health, and so we give thanks to God. The EC's responded. Is there anything that uh, they say they are going to review your petition and then get back to you? Is that something that gives you at least uh, some bit of uh, joy for now that the EC, all other things being equal, would heed your call? Well, I wouldn't say that it gives us joy. No. Um, uh, what I, 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 I would say is that it is refreshing that the EC this time around has... Um, spoken responsibly and has demonstrated at least um, in word that they are concerned about the issues we are raising and are willing to review them and come back to us. So we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, the initial response we had from them sometime last week left much to be desired. It was a very bizarre response, totally unbecoming of a constitutional body um, and so this is a marked improvement on that kind of wishy-washy arrogant posturing the impunity um, they've been displaying since we started this advocacy and so we will give them the benefit of the doubt and hope that they will do the need for look we are only asking the electoral commission to live up to its motto you know the motto of the EC Tell me. Fairness. In fact, it's transparency, fairness, and integrity. Mm. The first word in the motto, their own declared motto, is transparency. And what are we calling for? Transparency. And it is only someone who knows he's done the wrong thing and has something to hide who will be opposed to transparency. If you know you've done the right thing, if you know you've done your work well, you will embrace any call for transparency and accountability because you know that such a process can only vindicate you and even get more stakeholders to have confidence in you. Once you see a constitutional body, an electoral management body, or any body obstructing a call for transparency, you should know that that body or that person definitely has something to you hide. You think the EC has something to hide? Um, from their conduct. You see, it is said that actions speak louder than words. And the Bible says, by their fruits, ye shall know them. And if you look at the way they have treated the concerns we have raised, it leaves much to be desired. And for me, as a person, it tells me that they clearly have something to hide. The issues are very, very simple. And I don't think that we should have even got into this. They say the initial concerns you raised, they've addressed them. They've asked you to supply them with the others, and you've not supplied. If you supply them with the other evidence, they will deal with them. Initial concerns like what? By the transfer of, uh, you know, so you've raised issues about pussy guys. These are things they've seen them, they've dealt with them. Look, and so uh, once you show them proof of the other concerns that you have, they'll be rectified. And that's why uh, they are still preparing, um, you know, a final register. And they're not done. Okay, so let's say, Winston, you came to work this morning. Mm. And when you came, you saw water on the floor here. Okay, you saw water on the floor. Because it rained in the morning. So you saw water on the floor. Now, Ramon Aqua says, let's just mop the floor. Okay? And Sami Genvi says, no. You need to check the roof and deal with the leakages in the roof, which is what led to the floor being flooded with water. Either than that, you can mop the floor a thousand times, but the floor will still be wet. 
because the leakages in the roof have not been addressed. What the EC is saying is tantamount to Raymond saying, let's just mop the floor, show us the wet spots and let's mop it and go. The NDC is saying no, the starting point should be the roof, which has many leakages in the roof. Once you plug those leakages and you mop the floor, you will not have a reoccurrence of this place being flooded with water. This is the simplest so if analogy I, you, before, if I can I, give yeah, before you go on, so if I to get demonstrate you. what is going on. So if I get you, the NDC is saying, look, we've identified problems. For us to know, for the purpose of transparency and accountability, let's audit this so that all parties will be satisfied with the electoral roll and then we can go ahead with yeah, elections. Exactly. And let me even situate it uh, within the context I just expounded. You see, there is a legal regime for voter transfer under the electoral system. Oh. It is provided for by Regulation 22 of CI 91. And that regulation says that for a person to be able to transfer their votes, they must have relocated to a new place, okay, from the original polling station, and they must have stayed in that place at least for the 12 months preceding that voter transfer. So the law says they must go to a district office of the Electoral Commission in person and apply to an EC returning officer that I have this has been my place of abode in the last 12 months preceding this election. And so I want to transfer my votes from my original place of a vote to this new place. Uh -huh. That is how we've done voter transfers since time immemorial. It was so under Farijan, it was so under Charlotte say, it's been so even under Jimenza. And so under our electoral system, it is not possible for a person, a voter, to be transferred in absentia. Because the voter must be physically present at the EC district office. Apply to a returning officer before his or her vote can be transferred. The EC has always told us that it is not possible for transfer to occur in absentia. Now, after the compilation of the provisional register, you know the provisional register for 2024 election we have now, is an updated register of the 2020 register and the limited registration we did in 2022, okay? Now, the EC was supposed to give us this provisional register in good time so that we could scrutinize it before the exhibition exercise. Mm. To our shock and dismay, the EC chose to give us the register few hours to the commencement of the exhibition exercise, thereby making it very difficult for us as a political party to do what is expected of us. That is, by scrutinizing the register even before exhibition starts, so that if we have any issues, we raise it through our various structures across the country with the Electoral Commission. Now, when we got a few hours to the exhibition, we burned the midnight candle and did the necessary review. And we saw that in the case of Pusiga, at least at the time, we saw evidence of 38 voters who vote in Tamale, who have never been to Pusiga. Pusiga is a border town in Upper East region, for those who don't know. It is not in the Northern region. It is in Upper East. It borders Burkina Faso. And we saw these people <coughs> transferred to Pusiga without their knowledge, without their consent, they've never visited Pusiga in their life. How did it happen? Ex people um, who claim to be government officials approached these people. I'm telling you the inside story. Come any another way. They went to these people in Tamale and said, look, we have a loan for you. Government wants to give you a loan. So we need your voter ID cards. So they took their voter ID cards. And with that, they were able to get a corrupt, pliant, EC returning officer in Pusiga who showed that picture they took to the machine and was able to transfer all of them. Bear in mind, the difference between the Pusiga 
MPP candidate and NDC candidate in 2020 was 62 votes. 62. I'm talking about the parliamentary election in 2020. Mm. Good. So, at the time, we saw only 38. I mean, since then, our regional executives have, in the northern region, have discovered more. It is more than that, 38. So, we ask the EC, how did this happen? This has never happened in the history of our electoral system, that a person will be transferred in absentia. Never. And our Farijan, and as Charlotte will say, we, even under Jim Henson, since she's been commissioner, we, chairperson of the commission, we've never had such an issue. Because you must be physically present. We ask them and say, oh, we cry, we have seen it. So we will reverse it. We don't know how it happened. So we, we, we have corrected it. Now we have found more beyond the 38. We detected it. They didn't detect it. They said they have corrected the 38, but we have found more. So when are we going to correct the more that we have found? They say then they say that, oh, we are going to suspend the district officer. So we are saying, the district officer is not the one who is mandated by law to transfer voters. The appropriate official, the, the right official, is the returning officer. So if there is somebody to be punished, it should be the returning officer. But because the returning officer is perceived to be MPP, and the district officer is perceived to be NDC, the district officer who had nothing to do with this. The district officer is supposed to be the returning officer. There is a returning officer and the, the district officer. Their reason for punishing the district officer is that he has oversight over the returning officer. The district officer is a, a permanent staff of the EC. Yeah. Returning officers can always change. You get it? And so they are saying that the district officer has oversight. But the, what about the regional EC director? So, and what about Jimensa? Hold on. So if you are talking about ultimate responsibility then Jimensa should be suspended <laughs> that ultimate responsibility must not end at the district level it must not also end at the regional level what about the national level the direct responsibility must lie at the doorstep of the returning officer on whom the responsibility you know is is is, is imposed to ensure that the transfer is done in accordance with law because the law says returning officer but the EC says, okay, this is a wet floor. Back to the context, the scenario I gave you. So we have mobbed it. Now we have seen another spot, which is wet. So we show us, bring us the data, we will mop. And we are saying, no. Let's look at the roof and plug the leakages first. So that we don't have a rare occurrence of this. What do I mean by that? Let us look at the IT system governing. You see, the voters register. It's not like this sheet of paper. A lot of people, we, let's break it down for people to understand. The voters register of the EC is embedded in an IT system, an encrypted IT system. Now, the standard practice is that only authorized officers of the ECs must have entry, the right of entry into that system at the right time. So there are follow periods. There are periods set aside for voter transfers and so on, during which the right officers are allowed entry. Even the right officers cannot have access to that system, and for that matter, the register, at all times. Because there are follow periods where they are not supposed to touch it. Look, under Charlotte, say you recall we had a company in this country. Their name became very famous. They were called STL. You recall them? Superlog. Mm -hmm. um, technologies. Techn Superlog Technologies Limited. Yeah. STL. The Joel people. Yes. You recall. The MPP made a lot of noise about them and it led, them, it led to them being, their contract not being renewed and all that. And they, they, they were asked to go. Under that system, not even the chairperson of the Electoral Commission could enter the EC's IT system to add a name. Afarijan could not do it. Charlotte Ose did not have the power. N they could not even enter the system to add a name or to subtract. They could not. Unless STL was involved and other stakeholders were involved. That was how transparent, robust, and watertight the system was. Now, STL is gone. These guys, Jimenza has gone to pick a new IT consultant, just like STL. Just that they didn't make noise because they don't want you to know. And they are called Axon. 
And the guy who represents Axon, who works with the EC, is called Dr. Ofori. And Dr. Ofori is a former MPP test compatriot. And Dr. Ofori is working with Yao Kwache. And Yao Kwache is the son of Anfo Kwache, a Kufuado's former personal assistant. These are the MPP food soldiers running the IT system that STL used to be running. And we are saying that, look, and they are working with somebody like Apia G, who is a commissioner and a former MPP Tescon patron as well. And we are saying that, look. Sorry, you say they are working with you how? Apia J has a special role in IT. He's one of the, he's, he's a commissioner. He's a member of the commission. A commission. You, yeah, I know he's a you member of the commission. You know that the guy, the MPP communicator who was appointed that even could you said his appointment should be rescinded. Do you recall? There yes, was, there but were videos the question of him is really to Arguing on radio for the MPP like Abronje. You understand? And we said, no, you cannot appoint such a rapid yeah, MPP. No, so I mean, the question is, you said they are he, working he's with a, him. He, yes, he's a deputy commissioner. Okay, in charge of IT. Yes, he's he a works with them. He's okay. a member of the commission. 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 Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but his, he's part his, of the commission. His area of work is IT. Okay, so That's he's what assigned that responsibility. Yes, so he works in that area with these guys I'm talking about here. And we are saying that, how did a common a returning officer of the EC in Pusiga have access into this system, this encrypted system, to be able to transfer people in absentia, without their knowledge, without their consent? How? How, how is that possible? If that district officer could have done that, then other district officers could have done the same. If that district officer could have done that, then regional officers can do the same. It's, this is common sense. So there is a leakage, and that calls for us to look at your IT system. That is the basis of calling for a forensic audit of the EC's IT system. And the EC has admitted. And they say, we have corrected. But we are finding more. Look, in the Sunafo South, Eric Opoku is the MP. You can call him. 32 people transferred illegally in absentia to Insuatre. In Oforukrom, the same thing. In our win, the MPP parliamentary candidate whose vote is somewhere in Accra, has been transferred to our win outside the transfer window. And he's not the only MPP parliamentary candidate. In fact, if I check my phone, I'll get you others. Outside, when we were not doing transfers, they were doing transfers, secret transfers. So it means that people have unauthorized access into that system. That system cannot be relied upon. We can have confidence in that system. Okay. So... Let us audit the system. Because you know what? I raised this issue on um, TV3 on last Saturday. It's a program that has gone viral. And you know what the director of electric services of the EC said? Do you know his defense? His defense is that Mr. Banubio. He says that this happened because there is a technology called liveliness test. The liveliness test technology is part of the ET's IT system or is supposed to be part of the IT system for transfer. And it is that liveliness system which ensures that unless the person is physically present, you can't show a picture of the person to the machine and transfer him. If the, if the picture is not live, the transfer cannot be done. So it is only a live picture of a person sitting in front of you that can be used for transfer. That's why we call that system liveliness test. Can you believe it? that the director of electoral services of the EC says they bought that technology with our taxes, but they bought European model. So the European model failed them. So it is now that they have gone to buy American model or UK model. And so uh, post facto, the transfer, they are now going to take all the names through it. When political party agents are no longer present, they will sit in their office because transfer has ended. And now... Go and pick the data and take it through that. Hold on it one minute for me. Hold on so, one minute so, so, so in, in five seconds, mm -hmm. what we are saying is that this alone calls for an audit of the IT system. And if you have nothing to hide, then you should not oppose that. Because your own motto says that you stand for transparency, you stand for fairness, and you stand for integrity. So be transparent. If we go into the system through a forensic audit, if the system is a good system, the IT system is a good system, it will have the record of all footprints from 2023 when they gave us that register 
till now. It will show us all the entries into this IT system, who entered and at what time they entered and what they did when they entered. Okay, that's you on the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM, where this morning we're joined by Sami Jenfi, National Communications Officer of the NDC. We've been discussing the enough is enough demonstration and the way forward. So, Sami, let's look at it. You're asking the EC for a forensic audit. The EC says they're going to get back to you. If that doesn't happen, what's next? Well, if that doesn't happen, the struggle will continue. Um, we'll continue to press on. Um, this issue is at the heart of the sanctity and integrity of the upcoming elections. So it is not an issue that we are going to raise uh, in a day, talk about it in a day, have one day demonstration, and that is it now. We keep saying elections are won at the police station. How is this issue connected to elections are won at the police yeah, station? Elections are won or at the, lost at the yeah, police station. Elections are won or lost at the polling station. But that election that is conducted at the polling station is conducted based on a register. Mm -hmm. The voters' register is the fundamental material that is used for the election. Mm -hmm. And so, if that register is not credible, you you will start you will go into the election from a, posi a position from a disadvantageous position. So, right from the get go the process is tilted in favor of one party because the register is not uh, uh, credible. And that is why... The people who are voting in this year's election, no, no, hold they on. have all registered, right? Hold on. Everybody yeah. who is voting, we don't mm. know they are registered. They are each holding a card. Yeah. Their card stipulates where they are voting. Yeah. If I show up today at the polling station on December 7th, mm. why would I not be allowed to vote? Okay. So, we... You know our investigation, or like our audits mm -hmm. as a political party into the provisional register, is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. But at least as at the time we met the electoral commission, we had discovered three thousand nine hundred and fifty-seven voters who registered in twenty twenty. They are holding their voter ID cards, as you've stated, but their names have been deleted from the register, and the EC has admitted. And the uh, justification is that we illegally or wrongfully transfer these people and when we were restoring them back to the register we mistakenly deleted them so if the ndc had not detected that close to four thousand people would have lost their franchise not because they did double registration no not because they did double registration but the ec just deleted them right so they will go to the polling station with a voter's id card but they can't vote because the prerequisite the most important precondition for a person to be able to cast a vote it's not that you are holding a vote a voter id anybody can produce a voter id the most important thing is that your name should be in the register if your name is in the register and you don't even have an id card you can vote but if your name hmm. is not in the register and you have an id card you can vote so you you, you now you you can now appreciate the seriousness of the issues we are talking about here and somebody will say oh but it's just about four thousand people Mm -hmm. That is what we as a political party detected back then. We are detecting more. And there could be more. And you can only know the magnitude of that problem through a forensic audit. And that is why our call for a forensic audit is non-negotiable. And all voice... On the IT system of the, the EC? The register and its IT systems. That is how we call it. Because how do you... You can't even audit the register until you go through an IT system. You understand? So it, it, it's together... And you must do the, the audit of both the register and the IT system. And any reasonable person who loves democracy, who is mindful of the importance of the right to vote, will join this call and support this call. Now, How number two, number two, number two. No, I won't, I'm not done with the first question about uh, elections are done at the polling station. Now, when you go to the polling station to vote, anyone who is supposed to vote has his or her particulars in the main voters' register. But you will see that there is also there are other documents that complement the voters' register. One of such documents is the transfer list. Some call it the transfer register, yeah. which has the record of all persons who have transferred, transferred their votes yeah. to that polling station. Now, in the just ended voter transfers, we did. You know, political party. We insisted the EC didn't want to allow us representation. 
but we insisted, fought, and they considered that they would give us, um, they would give our agents the room to come and observe the process. The, rec the daily records we have, if you put everything together, the total number of transfers we should have in that list should be a little over 300,000. As I speak to you, the register they have given us, provisional voter transfer list, over 500,000. There is an inflation of 243,000 people who are not supposed to be on the transfer register, but who have been illegally added to the transfer register. Look, in 2008, the margin between candidate Ekufuado and candidate Atamels in the first round of the election was uh, what? How many votes? 40,000. And you're having one irregularity affecting 243,000 votes. And what that means is that those 243,000 people in the transfer list, if they are recaptured in the voter register, it will bloat the voter register automatically, the main register, by 243,000. What that means is that if they are giving different KOL codes in the register, they can vote twice. Because all the, the biometric system we use checks and crosses out the particulars of a voter who votes based on their KOL code. So they scan it and you can't use that KOL code to vote twice. But if your name appears twice with two different distinct QR codes, you can vote twice. As for the indelible ink, these days we know them. They can even give you washable ink. Or even the so-called indelible one, you put it in, when you put it in brick fluid, you clean it, it is gone. So it can happen. And that is why over the years we have worked tirelessly to produce a clean register which is not bloated. Because one, one man, one vote. And therefore, there are particulars in the register must be one you cannot appear multiple times in the register this is there the ec has admitted they said oh uh, there are some people who transferred their votes in 2020 and we mistakenly added them to the yes. 2024 register how can that happen you understand how can that happen and they say we have corrected it we say okay give us the corrected version give us you say you have corrected something so you should even be in a hurry you you should be happy to hand over the corrected version to us to allay our fears so that this matter is dead, is buried. They say, we won't give you the corrected version. Okay, re-exhibit the corrected version of the register. They say, we won't re-exhibit the corrected version of the register. Can you imagine this? The impunity is simply unbelievable. And that is why yesterday, Ghanaians from all walks of life, the Kayais were there, the concerned drivers were there, the Okada riders were there, the Praga riders were there. I saw civil society organizations, political parties, all united in one voice saying enough is enough allow for transparency allow for an audit protect our votes make sure you give us a credible register for free and fair elections that is not too much to ask what, what you're asking for how long would it take the ac to go through this the audit. term you use forensic audit yeah uh, uh, how I, long I, I don't think that it would take the ec who are you taking the estimate from i don't think that it would take the ec more than two weeks whose to do this. estimate is this no hold on hold on because let's demystify the animal call forensic audit mm -hmm. okay what do we mean by that because some th people hear the term forensic audit and they think that this is calling for a certain sophisticated system that is beyond the issue no we are simply saying each of the political parties should select an it expert well versed in the ec's you know um um, um you know uh, processes okay and these it experts should sit with the it the so-called it consultants of the ec who we know to be mpp full soldiers but we are ready to work with them the truth is just one we are ready to work with them we sit together if the ec is minded we can procure the services and undp has indicated they are willing to foot the bill because in any case they are already financing the main election so we get another reputable audit firm to join. So all political parties are involved with our IT experts. The register, before they give us this provisional register, they had given us the 2023 register. So we have that as a zero, the ground zero. That is a reference point. Then we have this provisional register. Let's run a comparison like the NDC did. And let's see, have names been deleted? 
like the NDC, is saying, we will know. The transfer that was done, what does the EC's record show? What does the uh, uh, political parties, what, what does their record show? How many transfers happened? Ah, if it was 300,000, how come the register you have given the political parties, you have over 500,000 people on it? What is account accounting for that discrepancy? Who are these people? How do we correct it? It's as simple as that. Why is it that 15,000 people have their names in the transfer list without any transfer path? In other words, the transfer register does not indicate where they were transferred from. So it is just like the Pussyga one. Somebody sat in his office and transferred people in absentia. The evidence will be manifest. But more importantly, when you go into the IT system, from 2023 to 2024, anybody who has entered the EC's database, all the footprints will be there. Anybody. If it is 1,000 entries, the IT system, if it is a good system, will give you the record of all those 1,000 entries. Who were they? At what offices were these entries made? And when they entered, was it the right time? Or it was a fallow period? And when they entered, at that time, what did they do? If they deleted something, the record will be there. If they added something, the record will be there. You understand? So all stakeholders will, will see. When we check and nothing wrong has happened, ah, NDC, you had no case. Just like Charlotte will say, set up the Justice VCRAC Crab Committee in 2016 to investigate, audit the then register on, on, on grounds uh, 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 that... We, according to Bawomia, we had 76,000 Togolese on our register. There were other grounds, but that was the main ground. Mm -hmm. Charlotte said they didn't brush it aside. No, because she had nothing to hide. A committee was formed, political parties had reps. They went into the register and they came out with their findings. Political parties made their presentations. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, the committee itself did its work. Would you would you would you support such a committee where you go and make your case? No, it's one of the demands we have made. And then the committee. So yes, it's but, one of the but, demands. Yeah, yeah, but I'm a asking, stakeholder forum uh -huh. with political parties, civil society organizations, development partners for us to discuss the forensic audit, the modalities, how it sh things should. You see what we are asking if, for. So, yeah, but the, the question is what that we if, are, and this fight yeah, we are fighting. I mean, it's if, not if, just for NDC people. Yes, I mean, if at the end of the discussion, mm -hmm. it. It, it becomes clear, for instance, at the end of the discussion, a decision that we don't taking, need an audit. They don't need a forensic audit. Are you prepared to stand of by course. that? Of course. Okay. Of course. Look, open it up. You see, for example, ask yourself, Winston, when we saw these uh, discrepancies, we didn't say we we're going to demonstrate. Did we say that? No. We wrote a letter as a responsible political party to the EC, cataloging the issues, and we demanded for a meeting. They obliged us and invited us. We said, look, these issues are of a considerable public interest. People, people, des the people of Ghana deserve to know. So allow the media, which is the fourth estate of the realm, to be present so that they can televise our encounter with you. If we are contriving flimsy arguments, everybody will see the NDC will be exposed that we 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 are just we just like you know lamenting for nothing. So allow. The EC says never, we will not allow the media there. Winston, why is Jimensa afraid of Joy News? Why is he afraid of your cameraman? Will your cameraman kill the hair or kill Bosman Asari or Samotete if you just send a cameraman to. You see, opacity breeds corruption. Okay. When you see people acting in opaque ways, it means they are corrupt people, they are afraid of sunlight, they don't want their bad deeds to be exposed. Thank and you. that is why mm -hmm. all of you must help us to get to the board. Today okay. I'm doing the talking, but I'll be very happy if tomorrow I just see the two of you, maybe with Kojo and some of your other colleagues, doing this discussion. I watch your show, um, the one on Joy News, the controversial one, the one you do with Evans, State of Affairs, State of Play. Yes. State of play. Yeah. I'll be very happy to hear your independent editorial views on this because Charlie the issue affects all of us Winston mm -hmm. for all you know your name no, has been deleted though. <laughs> for all you know your name has been deleted <laughs> one that you're uh, for all you know he has, he has actually done as he basically is going hey. to check he checked let me tell you something and there's no way you know him our yes. MP for Ashaman yes in 2020 his name was deleted MP Raymond, Sammy, go and check your name. Before, you before we go, Sammy, name before we go, um, you. you know, we've launched the MGL Safari uh, Valley Eco Park Initiative. Yeah. 
We've seen people training, uh, you know, people recruiting young uh, ones. And to Samuel Dami gave me 15 minutes. It's, 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 done, it's done actually. It's no, done. it's actually. Yeah, if we, we've actually extended it to 17 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, it's, so it's done. And so in, in wrapping up, and uh, you coming from uh, the Bono and the Ashanti region, it will be important to sponsor young ones to see how well they can coexist with nature. And like we say, when you lend to nature, nature lends back at you, to you. And when you, uh, you know, smile at nature, it smiles back at you. I am sponsoring 100 children from the Mpoho district. How many are you prepared to sponsor, Sammy? For them to be trained in... Yes. You know, my first degree... You, you, you know, my first degree uh, actually your, is in environmental science. Oh, fantastic. That, I and did not, BSc environmental science at KNUST. Uh, so okay. I'm very passionate about the environment. Uh, not that, that is I'm why I'm so sad. Time. Yeah, yeah. So uh. that's why I'm so sad that Akufu Ado Baumia and the MPP uh. have failed the nation this way and they've destroyed our environment, water bodies, forest reserves, everything gone. And so, um, commitment. as part of our commitment mm -hmm. as a political party to the fight against illegal mining, particularly by duty bearers and politicians, uh, and for and on behalf of His Excellency John Ramani Mahama, we'll also sponsor 150 people. Um, just for status, mm. uh, because we must support these private initiatives. John Mahama is clear in his mind about what he's going to do. He's announced the Blue Water Initiative. He's announced the Tree for Life Initiative. It is in line with what you are doing with this private institution. Okay. And so we will support it. But I will end by making this statement. Any initiative, any recommendation aimed at solving the illegal mining menace, which does not have a connection with the voting out of this MPP government is meaningless. For the recommendation or, or the initiative to or be to be mean yes for that training young ones. Yes. yes for the future they don't no, have vote no they are learning for, you see can you fight Galamse with Galamse yes <laughs> you can't fight Galamse with Galamse yes okay you cannot no matter the training you do for the young people which is good you are inculcating in them mm -hmm. the the con into their subconscious the need for them to you know. Uh, 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 not destroy the environment and all that. Very, very good that they learned that at the tender age. But they must learn from the right leaders. Hmm. Okay? They cannot be learning from people like Miriku Duka and uh, all these Galamsias, Chama to me and all these MPP apparatchiks who are divas destroying our water bodies. On that note, and our Sorry, Jeffy, no, thank you very, very much uh, for joining us. They should us. be learning from people like us. Stay with who us. Who never we'll mind. Right back.